Welcome back. Uh, this will likely be the last of the news videos for today. I, I don't know if players are going to sign. Do you sign a contract on Christmas Day? Do you make trades on Christmas Day? We're usually at roster freeze time where nothing happens at this time of year. This is normally when the channel is like exceedingly quiet and yet it's going to be noisy because we're ramping up to a season. So it's just weird. Everything's all backwards. It's 2020. So sure. Um, absolutely. You, sure. You want to wear pajamas all day? Knock yourself out. Uh, you want to wander around wearing sunglasses at night? Go for it. You don't have to be Corey Hart anymore to do that. It's 2020. So Tampa Bay's back in the news again. This was rumored to be out there for a while, and now it's happened. Anthony Sorelli has signed an extension. It's three years, so it's a bridge deal. Almost everybody's signing bridge deals. Uh, $4.8 million per season. So they'll be expecting a little more from him than they might have otherwise. Thanks to Kucherov being out. Now, even with Kucherov on LTIR and out for the season, if you look on cap friendly, Tampa's still probably going to want to have more wig wiggle room than they have. And so don't be surprised if you see Kalorn or Johnson or somebody get traded before the season started so they have some wiggle room and they can relax. Uh, Julian Brisebois has some work ahead of him still. Even though the RFAs are all signed now, and I don't think it's a coincidence that they all get signed at the same time they figure out, hey, Kucherov's not going to play this year. But uh, there, there's still some work left to be done. Uh, interesting news as well out of San Jose. 23-year-old forward, Daniel, you're taken, is on unconditional waivers. He had one year left in his contract. Guess he wasn't coming over to play, and they're just like, forget it. Uh, I liked your taken. I thought he was okay. I love the name you're taken. So that helps. I uh, he only played four games with San Jose. I don't know if there's any upside there at all, but at the very least, it won't be with San Jose. They're buying him out uh, or just, just you know, exterm terminating the contract. So unconditional waivers means any team, if they want to, they can pick him up. It's not going to happen. He'll then, the next day, have his contract terminated with the San Jose Sharks. So all the best to him. I have to assume he's KHL bound if he's not just staying there for the year, right? Um, I also wanted to point out we're 20 days till opening night. Right? We're 20 days till opening night. We got five games on that night. And we're 99.9% .9 confirmed that these games will be taking place in all their home arenas. The only team that it looks like is homeless to start the season is San Jose, which I talked about in the news video this morning. They have 14 of their first 18 games on the road because of that. So the Oilers will be at home against Vancouver. That, of course, will feature Connor McDavid. That'll be a very, very important game for both teams. You got to establish establish yourself early. It's only a 56 game schedule, and because you're only playing in your own division, it's going to be intense right out of the gate. Colorado, no better team to open the season against for Colorado than St. Louis, and I would also argue the same is true of St. Louis with Colorado. These teams don't like each other. These teams have been fighting it out for years. Makes sense that they're starting off against one another. Chicago starting off with Tampa, so Tampa will be raising. The banner for their Stanley Cup victory. You have to think Kucherov will be there, even though he's not playing in the game. Obviously, Kucherov has to be there for that ceremony. And Chicago gets to watch another team raise a banner. Um, Montreal will be in Toronto. Get get used to that. Get used to Hockey Night in Canada featuring Montreal and Toronto a lot this year. This, this is a year where Rodgers can start to claw back some of that money they've been losing on that TV deal. Because it's going to be hockey day in Canada every day and that's something that they can use to their advantage and look for a lot of Montreal Toronto games on Saturdays I haven't even gone through the entire schedule yet I'm guaranteeing that those guys are going to be on Saturdays regularly and understandably so right uh, and Philadelphia will open the season at home against Pittsburgh so these two teams will be able to renew their rivalry and uh, it's going to be an interesting season very, very interesting season. Do we see reverse retros in these games? Is that going to happen? Obviously not with uh, Montreal and Toronto because they both have blue. Um, Chicago and Tampa. Black against blue, maybe. Uh, St. Louis and Colorado. That would work. Uh, Vancouver and Edmonton. Yeah, that would work as well. So we'll see what happens. And of course, Pittsburgh and Philly would work. And uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be an interesting season that we get started 20 days from today. So we have seven days left in 2020, thankfully. A week from today is the end of it. And then 13 days after that, we're into the season, 20 days till opening night. Uh, and we are four, around a little less than 14 months away 
from the Beijing Olympics. And the union's already letting people know they intend to go. They want to go. And so they're going to work with the NHL on going. And this is a question that I've had, and we'll see where it goes. There's reason to think, and, and I haven't seen it yet, but there's reason to think owners aren't going to be too keen on players going over over to play in the Beijing Olympics in 2022 and shutting the league down for a couple of weeks just after they finally got things back to normal. There, there's likely to be some ownership that aren't going to like that idea at all because they want a normal season, 2021, 2022, and they're not going to like the idea of shutting it down for two weeks in the middle. And for, for the players too, are, are they going to be all that keen on just how squashed the schedule can get when you have the Olympics in the middle like that? It will be very interesting to see how that goes. And then the other thing we have to wonder about is, so the World Cup of Hockey, we were supposed to have one of those this year, and we didn't because of labor unrest. And then obviously, you know, with the everything being delayed, we wouldn't have had it anyways. When do we see a World Cup of Hockey? Does the NHL, does the league dangle that out there for players? And do players say that's a no-go? Like basically say, look, the 2022 Olympics, we're just getting back into a normal schedule. We'd rather not. What if we do a, a, a World Cup of Hockey before the 2022-2023 season and, you know, we can, you know, share X amount of revenues? Does that entice the players at all or do they say, no, we'd like to represent our country on the big stage, go to the Olympics, and is that the next big fight that we're going to be um, reporting on uh, <laughs> day in and day out for a while? Um, I don't know. They, they did sign a CBA where the NHL said they want to go. But they didn't commit to going to the 2022 games. There's no commitment in there that I know of to go to the Olympics. Just, we'll try. But, again, that's sort of like, you know, the kids are like, Hey, can we can we go to the water park tomorrow? It, maybe. Yay! I, I didn't say... Crap. I didn't say yes. They're already... Yep, they're all packed. Where are they going? They said that's for tomorrow. So, um, they packed everything in the van already. So yeah, this is this is the NHL and the NHLPA, and we'll see how that goes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.